confidence intervals are when you are going to use your sample statistics to try to make a guess about the whole population. Today we're going to look at proportions when doing this, and it does involve some pretty sticky formulas, which means I want to show you how to do it on the TI Inspire. So go ahead and stick with me all the way to the end, and we'll see if we can learn you something new today. Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni and this is Probability and Statistics. Today, like I said, we're going to be using the TI Inspire to work with confidence intervals. Now, we're specifically going to be looking at confidence intervals proportions. Now, I did other videos on the other type of confidence intervals and I'll tell you how you can find those at the end of this video. But let's go ahead and dive right into the example that we're looking at today. So our example today is now on the screen, and I'm going to read through this with you. It says that there's a wildlife biologist inspecting 153 deer that were taken by hunters, and they find that 32 of them are carrying a Lyme disease tick, or multiple ticks. They want you to calculate a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of deer that carried the Lyme disease tick. So we're gonna break this question down, but first let's go ahead and find out what it is the calculator is actually gonna be looking for. So if I go over to my calculator over here, I'm going to click on the calculator function of the TI Inspire, and we're gonna go into the menu, and number six says statistics, which is this class. And then I'm gonna go down to confidence intervals, because we're trying to find a confidence interval, and in this case, we're dealing with the one proportion Z interval. Now, I know that this was a proportions confidence interval because the original question gave us a total number of deer and then a number of successes. In this case, the number of deer that had the Lyme disease ticks would be considered our success. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that guy, and it brings up the things we need. First off, it asks for X, which is the number of successes we have. Then it asks for N, which is the total number of deer total. And then it asks for your C level, which is the confidence level that the question is asking for. It defaults to 95% for that. In this case, we will be changing that. So starting off, looking at our number of successes, remember that's how many actually had the Lyme disease ticks. In this example, that was 32. The total number of deer, our sample size was 153. And the level of confidence they won here is 90. Now they always need that written as a decimal. So do not forget that. You don't wanna plug in 90, you wanna put 0.90 because that is the decimal form of 90%. Once you have that, you go ahead and hit OK, and here's our answer. Now, the big ones are going to be your C lower and C upper. That's the actual confidence interval. And then the P hat is just the probability of success for this sample. So in other words, all they did was 32 divided by 153. Now, if you don't know anything about confidence intervals, you find the lower and upper by taking that P hat and adding and subtracting your margin of error. Now, the margin of error has a bit more going on there, but the calculator finds that for you. And it says, in this case, the margin of error that's going to be added and subtracted to get our confidence interval is going to be 0 0.054083. So it gives you the margin of error as well. And that N is just the sample size that we put in. So let's go back to how we would use this to actually answer this question. It's asking for a 90% confidence level. So we would say with 90% confidence, we believe the true proportion of all deer that have this Lyme disease tick is going to be somewhere between 15.5% from this guy right here and 26.3%. Now I did round those just to keep it a little bit shorter, uh, but those would be your final answer for your confidence interval for this question. So before we go any further, I do want to say, if you found anything in this video helpful so far, please go ahead and hit that like button below to let me know that other people are finding this content useful. With that, if you want to know more about other statistical things or other math content or ACT prep, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I'm releasing videos on those items constantly. But with that said, I do have other videos specifically on confidence intervals on the TI Inspire. In fact, I have two videos I'm going to throw up on the screen right now when the population standard deviation is known and when the population standard deviation is unknown and you have to use the sample one instead. Both of these have to deal with finding the confidence interval for the mean instead of proportion, but it's still capable of being done on your TI Inspire and these videos will show you how. With that said, guys, my name is Daniel Caproni and this has been Probability and Statistics.